Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Wish Doctor's Guide to Service Now. Today it's episode number 17 and it's a spin-off of the last episode number 16 which was actually about how you would have a record producer let the user attach some attachment files, in this case Excel files and then they would automatically be imported through update sets. In that scenario we had only one attachment and the question pop up in the comments how would I actually do when I have multiple attachments? Oops, sorry. And that is what we are going to talk about today and kind of had a different approach as well. So for those who still doesn't know who I am, my name is Goran Lundqvist aka The Witch Doctor, working with ServiceNow for I think five years now almost um, everything from technical assignment architecture mentoring best practice even new process development and teaching as well uh, i actually have my last teaching class last or this week since it's sunday today then i will not teach for quite a while since i've started to watch at service now with some different assignments but you can see I've been a customer at ServiceNow, I've been working and still is working as a partner, as a technical consultant, and soon I will be joining ServiceNow instead. Free time MVP, uh, love playing around in the community, helping out, writing blogs, answer questions and doing videos as well, of course. Also wrote my own book, The Witch Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow, which you can buy on Amazon if you want. If you want to connect, feel free to hit me on LinkedIn, Twitter, yeah, you get all my connections down to the, your left, that will be. And of course, I have a GitHub where I will store the code that I'm using in the different episodes. Of course, if you haven't seen it, go into Amazon, search for ServiceNow, you will get this book pop up in the first results. If you are an admin or an architect or wherever you are, take a look. Look what people are saying about the book. If it's something new, feel free to buy it and let me know how it goes. But enough about my stuff. Let's see what we're going to talk about today. We're going to take a different approach, like I mentioned. The last episode, we're actually just a record producer that created a data source and then imported that into the import set and we ran a transfer map. I will put the link to that episode in the description of this YouTube. Now I was actually thinking about how would I actually do this? Do I actually just want to have a data source and that's it? So I was actually starting to play around with the standard change catalog because thinking this might actually be a standard change that we are using like importing regular users in my example or whatever records you are importing manually through an Excel file. So in this case we're actually going to take use of the standard change catalog. I have made some configurations to it, uh, just to minor. Uh, then I actually looked at my code, starting to write code and scratching my head, how should I do this, how should I do that. Then if you haven't seen my latest posts on LinkedIn, we actually have flow now and a little less coding. So I actually solved this through the flow. I had to do two um, custom actions, which is just like three codes of, three lines of code in each, yeah. And they're really out of the box script. The, the actions isn't just there out of the box, so I had to create them. Hopefully, just like with my earlier, I think it was episode 12 or something, where I actually created a attachment uh, action in uh, in the flow since London didn't have that and voila in Madrid I can get rid of that because we had out of the box attachment actions now. Anyway I will not let you look at this boring PowerPoint let hit service now. So basically I took the service catalog and used that instead of record producer. Uh, for those who don't know about the standard change, it's a quite good one. Uh, I won't go through it now, how it works and so on. Feel free to, to throw a comment or so in the, in the YouTube. 
and we'll see if enough people will actually want me to show around. I can, of course, try to create a video of that as well. But basically, there are two things I needed to do. One is actually something called the two step. This one, I need to use two step because the way I'm triggering it uh, is when the standard change is being created. If I don't select two steps, that standard change will be created and the user don't have time to attach the files before it's being created. So I need to do this. If I trigger my flow in another way, I can of course remove the two steps instead. <clears throat> but for this scenario, I'm using the two steps and I have actually gone into the editor. Of course, this is the standard change out of the box workflow. And of course, I don't want this one to be triggered if I'm using my flows. So what I did was I went into properties and we waited a bit. Oh, come on. Well, basically I created a group called automated tasks. Uh, and I said to this workflow that if the standard change or the change is assigned to this group. Uh, if I can get my functions. Assignment group is not automated task. So if it's not automated task, then it won't be uh, triggering this workflow. Since you may have some standard changes that are using the workflow, some standard changes is starting to use flow. So this was my way of saying, don't ro run the old version of flows, aka workflows. Uh, then I created my standard change template, which looks like this. And basically, I didn't care so much. I just put that in a description on the short description as well. And then, I, as you can see, I just took the out of the box stuff. Uh, the only big thing is that I added an assignment group. Then I, it's posted in the service catalog and in a category called import of data in the standard changes. So if I go to standard change catalog, you can see that I now have an import of data here that is going to be used. If I click on that one, you can see this is my new template. I'll just show you how it works. If I click user, you can see that I don't have any users now. I click import of users and since I have two steps this isn't being saved yet so what I now want to do is of course add the attachments I'll just click here add those three these are basically two uh, rows of users in each XML you can see that it has filled in the, the information and now I'll just hit save uh, now when I hit save this will actually start running since I have already built the flow yeah and we have a volunteer trying to figure out Still show. as you can see the state is now closed if I reload the form the attachments are gone and we can actually look at the notes that I have done some documentations and you can see that we are doing some kind of change and I actually did some testing this one shouldn't actually be popping up as well hmm. that's good to see but that's just a, a minor log that I did so don't mind that one so how does this work then well I had a record producer earlier in the last episode that looked like this and I had a lot of code and as you can see I started to redo this to actually see what kind of how many attachment is it on and so on so I basically to get rid of all this code and this code isn't even finished so it doesn't work and then I built this this is the flow that I actually built so let's get through what I actually did to make this work now I came up with a trigger that says that when a change request is being created the type should be standard 
In this case, the short description should be import users, assignment group should be automated task, and just to make sure that we're actually coming from a standard change catalog template, we actually just say that this field should not be empty. Just a double check. Then what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we go and use the lookup records and actually, and then actually we go to the attachments and I say, fetch me all the attachments that belongs to the change that we are this triggering this flow. So that is the only condition we want to set. And just in this case, I said, just give me 10 because I don't think we will have more than that ever. You can, of course, define this how, how you want. When we have done that, just since I don't want to mess with the business rules that exist out of the box in change, well, that it actually stops you from going from new to closed. You can, of course, go in and modify the ways of the different um, <coughs> states where they can go. But I didn't want to do that in this one. We can as well do that in another uh, video to show you how to actually modify the different uh, states and the state handler. But basically this one is just the update record action goes into the change and sets the state to schedule because that is the next place to go after it has been on new. Kind of hard to move around here with Isaac running around. So the next thing we would like to do is check is there an att attachment on this change. If there isn't anything we are actually just want to cancel the the change and throw in a work note, which is the things I do down here, which I was actually f hoping for that this one, but this one isn't a if and else. It does all this and then it actually does that as well. So I'm just gonna to trash these two. And that one, and I'll make that work later on. So it looks if there are any attachments, yes, then we update the status on the change to implement and that's through the update record as well still no code then we want to create a data source record just like we did in the record producer course so we're doing that here i'm used to putting the name is actually the name from the change i take the user import form and then just add the the change number that will give you a data source that looks like this. Here you can see I had three attachments, then it created three data sources as well. Then let's get back to the flow. Then I just set the different values. You can see I get some nice drop downs and so on as well, comparing to my scripting I need to write everything down in a script then the next step now I have created a data source now I'm moving the attachment for <coughs> from the change to the data source and since this is a loop going through each time attachment records so we're looping through just like a while I'll use the out of the box and this one you need to have uh, Madrid to have. But from this I specify that the source attachment that I want to move is the attachment record that I am at right now in the for each loop. Then I wanted to move it to the data source record. Not so hard, right? I adding a work note to the task saying that the file with the file name was moved to this data source and in this case I just get the sysid so you know exactly which one it is and looking at the change these are those so file test user 2xlnx was moved to this data source this file to this one and this file to that one let's go back to the flow so now I have actually moved the data <coughs> or created data sources, move 
one attachment to that data source. Then we need to put get that data and move that into the import set. And this is where the custom action actually come handy. And what I do is, if I look at the record producer, I actually have the code here for the first action. <clears throat> so I have basically taken this code and just put that in a custom action. And let's take a look, load data from data source. The only thing that I specify is the data source object. So you can see that I have an input here, data source, which is a reference field to the data source table. Then I go and have creating a script step where I define that I have an input variable called data source, which has the value of what the, the user or the one creating the flow has put in there. Then you can see here is the same code. I have only changed this one to actually say, instead of current, I just take the object that I put in as an input. Then I just put in the import source record and the current again, put it as loaded, and as an output, I actually give you the, the sys ID of that import set. And you can see here is the definition in the script, and here I have defined it, and in the output, I got it here, have selected it, this one, and you can see to the right that the output variable is import set sys ID, the same label I has here. Looking here, we are on 324. If I scroll down here, here is my custom action. You can see this is my label, which I then can use to drag and drop in here as well. So that custom action puts the, the Excel file data into one update set. Then we need to run the transform map as well. Same thing ab about that one. I just actually took the code from here and put that into a custom action. And good to know since we are in, in Madrid, I could actually replace these two and call my custom action instead if I would like to do that. Just to have one way of handling it. Let's take a look, run transform map on import set. I need two things, I need to have the sys ID of the import set to run, which is the output of this first custom action. And then I need to know which transfer maps are we going to run. Uh, in this case, I have only one. This is a reference field, and you can look at the, the ones here. Uh, the first one is of course the string, it's just a sys ID. And then we have <laughs> transfer maps, yeah, that bottle is green. It doesn't show in the, in the video, the yeah, Isaac. So um, I can select type list, but that doesn't actually work in Madrid right now. So I would like to be able to select multiple. If you have multiple, I think you need to redo this to a string and manually put it in as sys IDs instead. But in this case, we can actually choose it as a drop down. Just by, by clicking here, I get all the different transform maps. Then I have another script fetching the two imports. And as you can see, I'm using the same code. Just change these two from actually getting the different ones. Since this is an object, I need to fetch the sys ID of the transform map. And this one comes as a string. So I got the import set already. And then just run the transform. Going back to the flow, you can see that that's what it does, and for each attachment it founds, it does the same thing. That is the reason why we have three uh, data sources, because you can only have one Excel file per data source, as I know it at least. If you figure it out, please let me know. But if I attach all three in one data source, it get messy and felt kind of random which of the Excel files it actually took. Huh. Because I had a, an error in my Excel file earlier. Let me just test something here. Uh, refresh. 
I'm just going to delete all my stuff. Delete. This will be interesting. I'm just going to double check so I wasn't fooling myself since I had some bad, <laughs> some bad uh, test multiple. Yeah, Isaac. Yeah, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Do you know that? Yeah. Okay. I think uh, your magic bottle won't show off like yeah, it should. So let me just. Yeah, I'm going to get this stuff loose. Hmm. So let me just double check here. It's that one over there. Ah, let me do it like this. Using a phone test. And I will just wonder if I just can make insert and stay here. All is correct. And let's just add like that. So if I hit load all records, will it actually load both? No, it just loads one anyway. So I had some issues <laughs> earlier when I had three Excel files, but all the users there had actually, or to have two users on each, and all of them have the same email address. So they're kind of not, and then I said email address is colors. So suddenly it just imported two, and then the next one updated those two, and that screwed up. And it took me quite a while to figure out that I have actually <laughs> typoed it. But, so it still didn't work so i didn't do this for nothing that's good so basically loop to each attachment record there is for this change then when we're done we are updating it to review and then to close because if we don't do this there will be a business rule that will stop and throw an error and say hey you can't go from implementation to closed that isn't any doable. I can show you just for fun. Let's kill this one. And let's take this change and I'm just gonna reuse this. No, I can't reuse that one. Let's, let's do it like this. I'll just save it. And I'll uh, activate it. I can even make it faster. I can actually remove this one because then we can't actually go to implement as we do there. So it will actually crash before the loop as well. So I'll hit save. Uh, activate. And come on. I'll go in here. Download change. Yeah, it's running, and I'll hit this one. And now we can see how we can troubleshoot as well, I guess. Let's throw up two files. There we go. And I'll hit save. And now you will see that it won't actually go to close or something like that I don't even think it should be moving what we can do now is go to uh, flow today's execution and you can see now I have an error clicking on this one and open it up now you can see that this one we was actually annoying us because this one will want to change this one to implement but it hasn't been in assessment yet so then it's actually hitting error so this is one way of troubleshooting you can actually go in and see where did it mess up and it's nice to tell you which business rules is actually the one aborting this one you can also if you were in here you have executions in here and you get the same place as uh, this one out here. So I think that was about it. Let me just give you a good 
last minute show of what I was talking about since I'm kind of proud of my book so let's get this one <laughs> let's go here is the one you got the both the ebook and the paperback and I guess if you don't have the link but are on Amazon you can go to service now and it should pop here at number one at the moment so that's that's quite nice so that's about it for now hope it will help you playing around with flow and standard change catalog of course and see you around Kindle.